one. Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. All of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That gentleman out there is. I'm Bryce Taylor in Austin, Texas. And folks of you, if you just tuned in and never, you know Bryce, he, he looks familiar to you. You kind of, I've seen that guy somewhere before. Uh, you follow him probably on Instagram and on, on his YouTube channel, probably more so on Instagram. You are the Austin Tequila Connoisseur. Yes, sir. And uh, Bryce is also one of our one of our catadores uh, for for uh, for Tequila Aficionado. And today we're we're very fortunate because we have a brand that is just hitting the market and actually making a big splash. You may have seen it also on Instagram. It's Don Rico. As you can see, I did get into the line a little bit, but there's a reason for it. There's a there's a oh you got yeah look at that look at that yeah, yeah. Isn't that pretty. That's like a that's like a bird's eye view of the uh, of uh, of an agave plant is what it yeah is. it's a it's a top down view that no one really does so it's kind of just a different take on the blue web agave yeah it, you know everybody's used to seeing the, those drone shots well this is this is what it looks like artistically a drone shot mm -hmm. you know or or if you're a bat that's what it looks like if you're a bat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where's the stem uh, but you can see I, I'm I'm shaking this now on camera. Uh, I did get into lots of shampoo bubbles and you, Bryce, you know how much I love bubbles. So mm -hmm. um, now how did this, there's a backstory to this. And before we, I think maybe what we should do first is taste this juice and then tell the backstory because it's very interesting how, how this came about to both of us actually, mm -hmm. and more so probably on, on your end than on mine, but mm -hmm. you know, um, but I have I have broken the seal on this. It's been it's been weeks since I've had any, so I have no. I, I didn't dissect it. All I did was, you know, uh, enjoy some of it, and there was a reason for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is coming from the uh, the Olivo family. Is the brand owner Rick Rick Olivo? Mm -hmm. Turns out the Olivos are a big branch of people. I had I had no clue how deep this really goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they're currently Rick and his family right now. They're living in Austin, Texas. Here, um, previously they were in El Paso. Um, Rick was even a uh, an attorney, I believe, for a brand at one point. You know, yeah. in Mexico as well. So yeah, wide reaching. And then you know, his niece does uh, some tequila content as well. Yeah, that's what I understood. And there's there's a there's a whole there's a whole network of olivos that is that is just I had no idea because there was one that I know but apparently the 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 nephew is also a distributor in El Paso for another yeah. another brand yeah two brands out there yeah I've been trying to get samples for those mm -hmm. and for some reason it's just not happening but anyway we poured the juice I, I Bryce just broke the seal off of his and we're using the Stasso Jarrito for tequila which is the official tasting glass of tequila fish and media. Um, I got to tell you, I, the one thing I do remember Bryce, when I poured this the first time and I did not use a, a jarrito, I used just a, mm. a snifter. I was just, there was a reason why I opened it. And I'll, I'll confess that in a, in a, in a bit. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Wow. I haven't had it in a while. Yeah, yeah. Full disclosure, Bryce yeah. has also had it, but there's a reason for that. So mm -hmm. we'll get into those stories, the backstory, the the the, the was it the, the rest of the story here shortly. Rest, yeah. What a lovely vegetal nose on this side, though. Yeah, vegetal, but I cook like the buttery agave, the the bright citrus notes, that zest, zesty. Keep talking. Yeah, that, yeah. If you folks have followed Bryce, you know you've watched his, he does his own tastings, he does his own content as well. But if you've read any of his tasting notes, very, very precise, very uh, conscientious and deliberate. And I, I love your notes, man, because yeah, I like you. the place, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are a lot of the, the familiar notes. But I mean, yeah, like you were talking about that vegetal, like, um, like green peppers. There's like, green pepper. Like fresh got, cut. That first whiff, and I have had some. I mean, half the bottle's gone. Yeah. But in fact, I can't remember why it was gone. But anyway, uh, it, I got like a like a mushroomy right at the top. 
just to support it. Okay, and then yeah. you're right. And then it turns into that green pepper, like bell pepper. That earthiness that, yeah, that mushroom would have, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's earthiness, but not dense. Like, it's not dense. I, I'd still say it's more on the... Um, more on the brighter side. Yeah, bright. Not perfumey, but... Citrusy, I think. Citrus vapors, I guess, is trying to think of a better word than vapor, but... Well, it's still opening up in, in Bryce's glass. I mean, to be fair, yeah. you, you just broke the seal open. So it's been sitting on, you know, somewhere in your closet somewhere. Yeah. And and it's interesting how how a, a product evolves even after you've gone through some some of the product in a bottle. You mm -hmm. know, you can really, folks, you got to let it open up, you know, especially yeah. the quality craft tequilas. Some people, I, I've heard complaints about some people saying, oh, I bought uh, such and such craft brand. And I hated it, but I went back to it, you know, a couple of weeks later and it was now it starts to grow on you. You know, that's the way these tequilas are. Yeah, because like where your bottle, you know, you, you've got a lot more airspace in your bottle. So that does change it over time. You know, absolutely. It does. And I and, you know, even we try to keep these tastings down to about 20 minutes. And even after 20 minutes, it's, if it's if it's a real craft brand, Bryce, am I right? You know, you can go back to it an hour later. When you're doing your notes and stuff, and you go, "Wow, I didn't get that when we did the tasting." It's completely. Yeah. It's just another layer of complexity that that appears. Totally, yeah. And I will say, there's enough. There's plenty of good alcohol at the bottom, and it's just doing its its job. You know, it's just mm -hmm. doing its. This is a beautiful nose, man. This is really. It simple. is, yeah. Well, you you want to dive in or? Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. Okay, here we go. Wow. I forgot to mention the legs and tears on this. Yeah. They um yeah. They're not generous legs and tears, but they're there. Yeah, they're defined. They're they're refined, yes. Yeah. But wow, what a that was my first try in a few days, actually. Yeah, so I mean that's my first, you know, sip today. So just, and it'll, I know the second sip will taste different, but yeah, just right. run away, like green vegetable agave, and a lot of pepper, but the, the good pepper um, yeah. mixed in with kind of that alcohol tingle. Well, it's a, we, it's a white pepper, we call it, you know, because it's not, mm -hmm. it's not that intense pepper like you would get in an añejo or, or black pepper. Yeah. Know, some of the other tequilas, this one, this one has a, you're right. The, not only is the, is the, uh, the lakes and tears more refined, but the flavor profile, that, at least on the first pass, was very pleasant and a mm -hmm. great finish too, man. Yeah, because even that second, I just took a second quick sip, and it's already more dense, so I'm getting more of the the layers. Mm. Mm. Wow, mm. there's a a lot going on here, man. Mm -hmm throughout the whole palette there's not one part of your palate that doesn't that doesn't get involved in this there's a little bit of sweetness on the initial uh, pass and then on the sides of the tongue but mostly it's that green bell pepper mm -hmm. and the, the white pepper explosion not so much an explosion but just it's there yeah um excellent lip and gum numbness the retro nasal just that green bell pepper really th now is that what would you say? Is that minerality a little bit too? Do we know what the process is, first of all? Do we know anything about that? Yeah, yeah. So they're, um, they actually use Highland and Valley Agave. Okay. They're using both. They're sourcing from both areas. Um, seven-year agaves, uh, brick oven cooked. Um, oh, seven years? Wow. Yeah, it's a seven, seven-year agave. You, you can tell. You can tell there's a lot of, there's a lot of character in this tequila. A lot of character. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's probably where more of that complexity is coming from. Um, but then brick oven, cooked 48 hours, and then they let it cool for 24. Uh, roller mill, uh, open fermentation, and stainless steel. And then they use a stainless steel still with a copper coil. Wow. And twice, you know, distilled the 80 proof. Right. Yeah. 
I'm glad you got all that information because you know the way this works, folks, is uh, apparently why don't you tell people you you had a relationship or have a relationship with with Rick Olivo? Is that correct? Yeah, so I've, I've met him. That you know they reached out. Uh, you know we both live in Austin, um, and so yeah, I went and met him and his wife uh Sharon you know and they gave me little, little tasters but you know just kind of wanted to you know meet and feel each other out and I've seen them you know a couple times over this this last year um then I was in LA for the tequila fest I met Christian there and then they, they've got a daughter as well Tiana and I met her in town and they had uh Don Rico headlined a uh the Austin tequila festival here so that that was at uh Casa Chapala correct mm -hmm. yep yeah, it happens every year, and it's been going on now. It's what 13, 14 years now. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. And uh, they've got a business partner as well, but mainly it's yeah, it's the you know the family behind it, and um, you know, uh, their daughter is the one who did the uh, you know the design work. All the is she a graphics artists? artist? Is she a, is she? A, uh... Uh, I don't I don't think so by trade. I think she's just really creative. I can't remember what what she does, but yeah, I mean, did a great job. You know, I mean, the, the packaging's nice because, I mean, you'd have to have your hands on it. But obviously, you can kind of see the the foil printing on here. Yeah, yeah. It's very elegant. I yeah. mean, it's got it's got Rick's signature, I believe, on this, right? Uh, Rick Olivo. Is that his signature? Yeah, yeah I yeah. believe so. On the... the Olivo family, apparently, like I said, is very well uh, uh, versed in the tequila industry. And and um, I met Christian. Christian is is Rick's son. Mm -hmm. Christian is a working actor in LA. I had no idea. And he and his, his girlfriend or his significant other mm -hmm. uh, drove by the house uh, by here and dropped off my samples. And we had a great conversation on my lawn. Right. So, and, and he was in LA a nice kid. I, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. he's, he actually, it was so funny because I have a picture that I haven't posted yet on our Instagram. Um, apparently for Christmas, Rick, Gave Christian uh, the 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 consumer catalog book, oh, yeah. so he's you know so uh, uh, Christian is studying the book, uh, which is great. I'm so happy to hear that, that a lot of the newer brand owners are really hopping on that that book bandwagon. And and Bryce, if you have been following Bryce at all, you know that Bryce actually took the course, and he's that's why he's one of our TJs now. Yep. Apart from everything else, apart <laughs> this guy's involved in everything. Uh, you know, it has to do with tequila. And um, and I love Bryce's notes on 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 other other brands that he's been doing. But you know what I'm romanced with? What I love about this is that vegetal, that green pepper. Just even before I take the sip, it just comes right up and and says hello. Mm -hmm. And I I love that. Now I'm not getting a lot of mamposteria. I don't get a lot of brick oven. So do you know if the distillery? It's a small distillery, folks. In fact, we should give the number. Uh, there are only four brands that come out of there. Uh, this is Distillery 1608. And I, I did get a name. So let me give you the name of 1608. It is called Compañía Tequilera de los Valores. Mm -hmm. The values. And there's only four brands. Three of them are completely in Mexico. And, and this was, I think this is their first one to come to the States, right? Yeah, it's my understanding it's the only kind of active brand, but yeah, it's definitely the the only one that we're going to get a hold of. Um, so Rick was telling me that they they do produce down there, um, but as far as actual you know bottling to a specific brand, it's right now it's just you know Don Rico, which is really cool because they're they're working with them a lot. Uh, I was told they're going to put in a Tahona. Um, oh, you know, good. Copper. Uh, also, I think they're trying to get copper, uh, full copper stills as well. So, you know, it's good to kind of have that that influence and creativity. You know, what surprises me is the, the character and quality that we're getting out of this tequila. And and there's not they don't it, you know, it, it's got an old school flavor without all the mm. old school tools. Right. I mean, the copper pot in the Taona is going to add a whole nother layer to a seven-year-old agave. I mean, right. uh, you know, we're talking, we're talking stuff that, you know, back in the day when you and I were coming through that we're going to have a, you know, like a Tapatio or a, or El Tesoro or, or a Chanaco, you know, cause this has really got a lot of character. This is, this has got an old school flavor to it. And now I don't know if you got a chance to see the, the interview that Rick did with, uh, 
uh, with the techie ladies on Instagram. It is available on Instagram. If you're listening to us, go to the Instagram account where it says techie ladies and look up the Don Rico interview. And I caught bits and pieces of the interview because I was doing something else. Come to find out that Don Rico, Rick, uh, enjoyed uh, Dos Lunas. It was Dos Lunas was a favorite of his. And apparently in the works in the future, I wasn't listening completely until later on. He is hoping to age tequila in sherry barrels because his, his history, his background is obviously Spanish, Spain. I mean, that's where his family roots are. And that's pretty much, you know, everybody with a Hispanic surname or Spanish surname has roots in, in Spain. But apparently his roots are a little deeper than some of us, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, um, and when he, he did something funny, he mentioned Dos Lunas. Because Dos Lunas had a tequila, and you you tasted it before, that was aged in sherry barrels. They came in a Baccarat bottle, and it was beautiful. And I actually had that tequila with Richard Poe the Third, and that's a whole other story. I'll I'll get into it some other time. That was an experience. That was a two day weekend at at, at Casa Casa Poe. Uh, right. At he used to call it the Poesis. <laughs> uh, yeah, this really great character. Let me tell you. Anyway. Long story short, he said that he loved, you know, the 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 uh, Dos Lunas aged in the sherry barrel. So apparently that's something in the works because sherry in Spanish is considered is called Jerez. And okay. some of us who have been around, we look for tequilas aged in, in sherry barrels are kind of rare right now. I think mm -hmm. isn't um, Tears of Llorona, I think, is a is a blend. And don't they use sherry barrels? Yeah, I think it's one of the three barrels they use. Cognac. And brandy, I think, or brandy and yeah, brandy sherry. It's one of those, mm. and uh, and I remember having it. Wow, mm. uh, and I've had other tequilas. Uh, it, uh, the same distillery that used to make Dos Lunas used to make a five-year, seven-year, and like a ten-year-old um, uh, called Herencia. Uh, I think it was called Herencia de Mexico, Herencia de, de Señor, Herencia del Señor. And it used to come in a, you've seen this, haven't you, Bryce? It came in a wooden box with a reedle attached to it. And it was an extra añejo. And the bottle is kind of a, a, a hexagonal bottle. Okay. Beautiful. beautiful uh, uh, I mean, if you could find those bottles in the wild, it was, I had the five-year and I've had samples of the seven-year. I prefer the five-year because that was to me like, it was so creamy and soft like root beer. It was, it was beautiful. It's not and, too and after, yeah. and after seven years, it just started tasting like like everything, like something else, right? Right. So apparently, that's in the works for Rick. Is he's going to try and emulate uh, something similar? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exciting. I, I know he's looking at doing a sangrita as well. So. Oh yeah, yeah. with this yeah. with this blanco all so, day long, man. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. We, also, yeah. One thing I was going to say with this is. A lot of what you get in the nose is also on the palate. So that's that's exciting. You know, you're not getting the. Yeah, the, it's not. It's not. Room. Room. Yeah. Right. It's it, we would call that a balanced, a balanced nose and a balanced palate. Mm -hmm. You know, what you smell is what you get when you taste it. And I would say that when you hear me clearing my throat, I do a lot of retronasal. It's the say it confirms what what went down in the first place It's just when it comes back up. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. But it is, it's complex. I, I, I will say that, I don't know, you, you're you the cocktail guy. What do you think? Mm -hmm. worth, worth putting in a cocktail? I wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't overpower it. I'd let it shine. But yeah. I even get a little bit of spearmint. Am I wrong about that? It's like a combo between green pepper and, and like on the nose, right before it, right before it goes in. A little spearmint, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that mint kind of with the alcohol tingle, it's kind of right there, a little thin. Yeah, it, and, it, and, it and just the sweetness. It, and just a hint of sweetness. Like it's not overly sweet, but I mean it should be there. It's a you know, an agave spirit. Wow. Yeah. Anything else we want to say about this baby other than brand a promise nominee? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hey, where's your where's your ice cream stick? <laughs> Uh, I've, I've got it. I just was like, ah, do I have time to do it on there real quick? Yeah. That's a brand of promise nominee. It's oh, so funny. Sure. I, I did, I had a couple of tastings with Dave 
He, he didn't put his on an ice cream stick. He goes, no, he said, I want a tongue depressor. He wants one of those big pads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like you're at an auction. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is that is stellar. Now, again, rule of thumb, a rule, a uh, general rule is if you like the Blanco, you're going to love the rest of the line. So let's get into the rest of the line. Uh, anything else you want to say, Bryce? I know we're, I know we're, you're not used to do this, because I know you like to take your time with it, but yeah. But I know you pull stuff out that that's not everybody picks out and, and might be something I missed. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think we pretty much, you know, nailed it to where you're going to get a good uh, idea of what what this product is. Yeah, I could say it would take me more time, but there's a lot there. Um, yeah. But it's not overly complicated to where you can't just sit down and enjoy it. You know, you don't have to pull out all the different layers. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It's but that's what we do because we're, we're nerds. Me. Yeah, exactly. We're nerdy like that. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's why people tune in because they're nerds too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I would just say, yeah, job well done. Like it's a. a excellent. Problem. Yeah. I, I, I would love, as a matter of fact, I, I'm hoping to get Rick on our open bar. I would love yeah. for you to join me so that we can, we can kind of team up and interview him and see how. Uh, I know that the techie ladies did interviews with him, but I didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to watch all of that, which is fine. Um, yeah. But I want to, you know, I, I understood that he was a he's a trademark lawyer, and I, I asked Christian. I said, "Didn't he say he was a trademark lawyer?" He goes, "Yeah, he's done everything." He goes, mm -hmm. "He's been a judge. He was yeah. a judge in El Paso too." So, and I used he, to know a, a he judge. Is here in, yeah, he is here in town as well. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So don't get a ticket in your town, huh? <laughs> I know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's our take on Don Rico Tequila, folks. If you've had it. Uh, let us know if you're watching us on, on uh, YouTube or maybe the Instagram. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know what you're doing with it. You know, give us a like. Also, follow Bryce at Austin Tequila Connoisseurs. You've got a YouTube channel, but also mm -hmm. your primarily Instagram is where you do yeah, it. Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and if you've had it, if you're out in Austin or Texas, by the way, uh, I'm hoping that um, they will be able to get into uh, uh, in. Um, into California shortly because um, they're not in California yet. However, they are at Old Town Tequila, right? I believe so, yeah. I think do I saw know, photos of Christian there, yeah. Do we know, do we have a price point on this at all right now? Uh, I don't. Um, okay. well, uh, well, you know, if we get one, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll announce it on the Reposado Review. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's our take, folks. You've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales in Southern California. That guy out there is Bryce Taylor, Austin, Texas. You've been watching and sipping to, to uh, Tequila Aficionado Sipping Off the Cuff uh, on all of our channels and networks. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a like, and uh, you know share it to other Tequila Aficionados on, on the uh, on the uh, you know the the YouTube. Uh, algorithm and whatever you do tomar sabiamente sip wisely thanks for tuning in please be sure to visit our website at tequilaaficionado.com to get your free subscription to our magazine download past issues check out our branded merchandise or get yourself equipped with the best tequila glassware for your sipping style as always sip wisely <laughs>